glory of God in Christ. I want to talk for the next few moments about the blessedness of holiness. The blessedness of holiness. Just how blessed you can be, will be, and should be. If we would just live like God said live. Holy is defined as moral and ethical wholeness or perfection. It is freedom from moral evil. Holiness is one of the essential elements of God's nature that he requires and he demands of his people. Holiness may also be rendered sanctification, purification, or godliness, or godlikeness, or patterning ourselves after the image and the likeness of the only true and living God. Can I borrow an amen? The word holy denotes that which is sanctified or set apart for divine service. When we look in the word of God in Exodus chapter 29 and 9, the Bible lets us know that God instructed Moses to consecrate Aaron, to set apart Aaron and his sons to the priesthood. And thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. It was to be for a perpetual, ongoing, enduring, everlasting statute, guideline, rule. This is what God demanded and God required of his people. Can you say amen? amen. And so, brothers and sisters, please understand to be declared sacred and sanctified is to be dedicated to religious use. Something that is declared, someone that is declared sacred and spiritually pure. And God does not want us contaminated and touching that which is unclean. Oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Okay, please understand that the children of Israel, they were admonished to remember the Sabbath or the Shabbat day to keep it holy. It was to be distinct, unlike any other day of the week. That day was reserved unto God himself. The holy of holies, or the holiest of all, it was the most sacred place in the desert tabernacle and in the temple at Jerusalem. That according to Exodus 26, 33 and Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Elisha was called a holy man of God. Herod feared John the Baptist, knowing that he was a just and a holy man. I wonder how many people reverence you and fear you and stand in awe of the God in you because of the life that you live. Somebody ought to be able to look on our lives and see Christ in us, the hope of glory. They ought to be able to say there's something just different about you. I don't know. I was depressed before I stood in your presence. I was not quite myself until I came into your presence and there's something different about you. Now all of us that are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, blowing bubbles at the mouth, hanging from the ceiling, fan and ticking like a clock. We know exactly who it is. It's Christ in us. Yeah, it's the Holy Ghost, the hidden persuader in the life of the believer. Can the church say amen? And so don't get the big head and start thinking you're all wonderful and we all that in a bag of Doritos. When somebody just thinks we all that, you got to make sure God gets all the glory. Make sure God gets all the praise. Make sure God gets all the honor. I don't care if you're in Walmart in the produce department by cantaloupes and lemons and limes. Just break out in song and say to God be the glory. This is not working too well, moving right along. And so, brothers and sisters, please understand that while holy is sometimes used in a ceremonial sense, its main use is to describe the righteous nature of God or the ethical righteousness that he demands of his followers. In Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 through 14, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Say the Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? God said, bring no more vain oblations. Don't bring any more vain offerings unto me. Your incense, my God, incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies. He said, I cannot do away with that stuff. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. God said, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me, and I am weary to bear them. How many of you know God does not want us to have a form of godliness? He wants us to be godly. He don't want us to have a form of holiness. He wants us to be holy. Come on, somebody say amen. 
And so my friends on today, please understand that originating in God's nature, holiness is a unique quality of his character. The Bible emphasizes this divine attribute by asking the question in Exodus 15 and 11, who is like you, O Lord? In 1 Samuel 2 and 2, it states that there is none holy like the Lord. In Revelation 15 and 4, who shall not fear you, O Lord, for you alone are holy. My friends, my brothers and sisters, God's high expectations expectations flow out of his own holy nature for he said in his word in exodus 19 and 6 that ye shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for i am the lord thy god brothers and sisters jesus was and is the very personification of holiness he reinforced god's righteous demands for holiness by insisting that his disciples must have a higher quality of righteousness than that of the scripture tribes and Pharisees and we know those were the individuals who acted more deep and more pious and more holy than anyone else they had a form of godliness but they denied the power thereof and apostle Paul said from such turn away for these are the sort that lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lust you do know it's the empty wagon that makes the most noise okay that didn't work moving right along brothers and sisters please understand they had a form of godliness but they denied the power thereof like the prophets Amos and Hosea Jesus appealed for more than ceremonial holiness he said in Matthew 12 and 7 I desire mercy and not sacrifice now as I hasten to a close the theme of sanctification or going into God's likeness my God is prominent throughout the word of God just like Jesus the apostles taught that sanctification or true holiness it expressed itself in and patient and loving service while awaiting the Lord's return. Uh, Apostle Peter urged the suffering Christians of the Roman Empire to follow God's example in holiness even in their everyday trials. Uh, in 1 Peter 1 and 15, he said, but as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all manner of conversation. Uh, I want you to know people are going to lie on you, but you still got to be holy. They're going to scandalize your name. Uh, but you still got to be holy. They're going to back bite and nibble on you, but you still got to be holy. They're going to lie and steal and slip and slide and duck and dodge and peep and hide, but you still got to be holy. Why don't you throw your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care, and say, holy. We still got to be holy. Well, Paul's prayer for the saints at Thessalonica, it's timeless in its application to each of us, to the church and each of us as individual believers. Paul prayed in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and may the Lord make you increase in love and abound in love towards one another so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints uh, would you get somebody by the hand uh, look them in the face and tell them neighbor God said oh you're scared to touch them don't look at them don't touch them just look at them and tell them God said uh, you gotta be holy say yes I want you to know that God Almighty is calling all of us to holiness for he stated in his word sanctify yourselves and be ye holy. God's not going to ever tell us to do something that he will not enable us to do. I can't do this on my own because in my flesh dwell of no good thing but I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I can live this holy life. I can walk up right before God if I do it through Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I but it's Christ that lives in me in the life that I now live in the flesh. I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Why don't you throw your hands up and say holy holy sanctify yourselves and please note that God isn't asking us to be holy he's not begging us to be holy but he did what Nike said just do it you just gotta be holy he's commanding every one of us to be holy from the inside out and the thing that blesses me 
is the fact that the commandments of God, because it's the command of God for us to be holy. He's not begging us, but he commands us. And the commandments of God are not grievous. And the Greek word for grievous is parous, which means heavy and weighty and burdensome. It shouldn't be like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders to live like God said live, but it ought to be a joy. I ought to square my shoulders back and say, I'm going to live this life. I'm going to walk this way. I'm going to talk this way. I'm going to live like God said live. I'm going to behave myself. I'm going to keep my nose clean. I'm going to do what God said. Say yes. Well, I got to quit. You look like you're hungry. And I don't want to stand between you and the meal. But when the Lord gives us a command and we keep that command, there are rich blessings that will follow our obedience to the call of God to be holy. Let's take a brief look at what God's word said. I know you got a whole lot of people in your ear, but faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to hear the word. It'll make you wise unto salvation. Open your ear to the word of God. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed to the word of God. This ain't working too well, but blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand up in the way of sinners, nor sit up in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth up his fruit in his season. Your leaf also shall not wither, and whatever you do shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the righteous, the way of those that live holy. How y'all doing out there? You gonna be all right? Why don't you say, yeah, well, I got to quit. But God said, tell my people, I never changed my mind about this thing called holiness. And some of you don't know why you're not blessed as you would be, could be, and should be. Because you haven't made up in your mind and purpose in your heart that I'm going to live like God said live. But when you make up in your mind, I'm going to do it God's way. I found that God's way is the best way. Let me back up. God's way is the only way. It's the only way to blessings. It's the only way to favor. It's the only way to the anointing. It's the only way for power with God. Power. This can't be the church of God in Christ. Power to live this life, power to behave yourself, power to walk up right, power to back the devil up, power. Well, look at what God said. Since y'all don't want to hear me, and that's not all bad, but I will tell you this much. How can you hear without a preacher? So God chose the foolishness of preaching, not the foolish preacher, but the foolishness of preaching to let you know what he's got to say. That it's time to go back to living holy. Declare yourself, I'm out of there. I'm not going to keep walking hand in hand with the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if anyone love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But he that does the will of the Father will abide. Will abide forever. Look at what God said in Deuteronomy 28. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. You can do what you want to do and expect to be blessed. It's God.
God's way on a highway. God's way is the way. Jesus even said, I'm is the way, the truth and the life. No man gets to God the Father but through me. God. Oh, God. He's calling us to holy living. And God wants you more blessed than you want to be. And so he said in his word, it will come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee up on high above all the nations that are around you. Don't touch anybody, but look at them and tell them all it is. Here's a setup. God wants to set you up and bless your life. He wants to set you up and anoint your life. He wants to set you up as you live holy to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying, to feed the hungry, to call the naked, to shelter the outdoor, to get somebody that don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins, to let dying men and sinking women know to the utmost Jesus says he'll pick you up turn you up hallelujah my daddy's here I can preach now cause daddy's here but my God I'm here to let you know God I think I got 20 I got 5 now I'm going to pay somebody to say, God, God is calling all of us to holiness. It's time to live this life. It's time to walk this life. People are no longer reading the Bible, but they're reading you. We're living epistles, being read of man day and night. They see you when you're sleeping. They know when you are awake. They know if you've been bad or good. So be good for your own sake. The world has their eyes on us. The only Jesus they'll ever see is the Jesus they see in us. I'm going to my seat, but it's time to live holy. Lord, I wish I had my voice. Well, God said, I said, God said, I'm going to try it one more time. I said, God said, if we just live holy, he shall establish thee, a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, walk in his ways, and all of the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you, not because you're six foot two, 240 pounds, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in good in the fruit of your body the fruit of your cattle the fruit of your ground and all your good in your body say yeah the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heaven will give rain into thy land in his season to bless all the work of your hand you shall lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the head and, and not, not the tail. He'll make you above only and not beneath. I gotta go. Don't y'all want to see me leave? I'm going to my seat. But on my way to my seat, I want y'all to know I'm covered by the holiness of God. Holy Bishop, they won't say holy. I, I need them to say holy. Bishop, please tell them to say holy. Holy! Holy! All righty then. We got to get out the way. We're about to move into our next service. But all the way over in this corner, you, you know, in the baseball game, and I believe it's the Washington Nationals that just won the World Series, but in hey Mother Harris, in in the stadium, they had something they called the wave. Bishop, I know we gotta go on to the next service, 
and I hope we can get into the next service. But all of you that are living holy, all of you that are struggling in this thing called holiness, God's getting ready to touch you right now. He's going to strengthen you in the inner man. He's going to make your feet like hind's feet and things you've been tripping over, stumbling over. He's going to cause you to leap right over whatever it is. But all the way in this corner, to all the way on this side, let's get a wave going. When I point at you, I want you to say it real loud. I want everybody to say, holy, 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 preach, holy, preach, holy. From the inside out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>